Hey Pete, what you doing? Getting her cleaned up, brother. What is that stuff? It's foam, like car washing shampoo foam. Okay, is it something you sell? Nah, yeah, we've got some on the website, yeah. He doesn't even know what all he sells. It's on there. This, this is the GCI clean pressure washer kit. Okay. That I put together just for uh, just for equipment washing. Okay. So this is kind of like a quick wash before, because we've been at the farm. Yeah. It's butt nasty, and I don't want to take it to a really nice athletic field looking like this. So you're saying you work for the snooty customers? Uh, no, I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who the customer is, I like my stuff to look good. So this is an electric pressure washer. Their washer's actually inside there. Yep. You can get a 50 foot hose or 75 foot hose. And if they use coupon code TTWT, they'll get 5% off. TTWT. 5% off. 5% off. Cool. Where do they get that? GCITurfacademy.com. Oh, okay. Yeah. I need to go there. Order me one. <laughs> I mean, what I like about it is, we'll show in a minute, it's, it's all just on a hose reel in your, in your shop. It doesn't take up much space. Yep. You don't have to drag it out. The, and the design behind it was intended for lawn care companies so that they could have a set of mounts and mount it on your shop wall, pop it off on Friday, take it home, and use it at home and bring it back the following day. Okay, is it like modular? Do they buy all the different pieces or no, do you buy kit. one whole kit? kit the entire and you can buy the pieces separate but it but you can get the kit and get the whole kit and caboodle i just want the kit not the caboodle you want, you want yeah yeah you want the kit <laughs> <laughs> and it's cleaning my windows so i can see your windows were pretty bad but this isn't really like a full-on detail i'm just kind of knocking the dust off and shining it up yeah. So I look good for them all. Oh, get some of that in there. Look at that. Oh, and it came right off. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Works quite well. Something I like about the pressure washer is it has enough pressure to clean, but it's not enough pressure to damage. It's only 1,800 PSI. I think that's kind of important. I think I a lot of times use too much pressure. And the stickers on the uh, tractor, on the loader, and some of those stickers can come off. I've, I've knocked them off some, some attachments and tractor a little bit. Not so. to mention all your electrical and that kind of thing. You don't want to just be pounding it with water. Yeah. I know this may sound weird to you, but another reason I'm, I'm washing it is we've been in a lot of crap today. So there's no telling what kind of seeds are on the tractor. And I don't want to take those seeds and put them in my high dollar Bermuda athletic fields. So that's another good reason to wash it off. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Now whether or not the seeds are viable and will germinate, I don't know. But I'm not going to take that chance either. We're not going to be able to stick around long enough to, to see Pete on one of his actual baseball fields. But I just love to hear him talking about it. And so you, you're going to have to watch that on his channel. But we are going to show you a new attachment that he's got for this tractor on a representative field. We'll get to that now. Uh, this is what we're going to hook up. Oh, now. yeah. That, that is a first product seed evader. Uh, it's an air evader uh, with a seed box on top. And then, of course, I got the spike shaft as well for ball fields. The reason I got this is really one fold. I bought the air aggravator, which is considerably more aggressive. You see, here's an aerovator uh, head unit. And the three and a half inch tines, these are five eighths inch tines. And uh, the aggravator has six inch long and three quarter in diameter. And the overall implement is considerably heavier. So it's aggressive. It's like super aggressive. And it's almost a little too aggressive for my athletic 
field. So I dropped back and punted and got the aerovator, and I'm going to be selling my aggravator. And, and this is kind of the replacement of it. And you know, obviously I can use the seed box for overseeding in the fall as well. Any aerovator is, of course, to break, break up hard ground. Yeah aerate without leaving the, the cores all over the ground like a traditional right. plugger. Uh, the, the purpose of the spiker head or slice shaft is actually less aggressive than this, but you still get aeration and plus you cut the rhizome and stolen of Bermuda, okay. which makes it go crazy as far as spreading and growing. Yeah. So you kind of get three different things going on with the sli uh, slice shaft, whereas with the aerovator, you're really only getting one. I right got an there. instruction book. You want to throw it away now or later? I mean, it, it don't matter to me. <laughs> I, 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 rare, I rarely look at an instruction book. <laughs> Unless we have trouble, right? Yeah. Sealed PTO shaft bearing. Now we're talking. Yeah, that's good stuff. No grease on the PTO. Oh, no, there's the grease fitting. It's one. easy access, see? You don't have to get inside the U-joint. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Man, this thing can go all over the place, can't it? It's got all kinds yeah, of... It, yeah, it oscillates big time in the back. Twist and turn. And then you can lock it in, it looks like. There's the lock in right there. That's locked in. Yep. I'm wanting to see this thing in action. I love the hitch assist. Oh yeah, isn't it nice? Do your tractors have this? Only the 4R, and no, I don't own a 4R. All right, hope. Tell me when. That's good. Need to go up a little bit. A little bit more. This is the good part of the hitch assist, see? Ah, okay. You taught me something new today. What do you think, Pete? Oh, I like it already. Uh, so the way you set the depth on it is you, you drop it, put full weight on it, turn the PTO on, let the head unit bury, and then you adjust the back end to where you're just getting in here to the the uh, the knuckle of it, or the head, the head unit itself. Yep. You only want the spike going in the ground. I think I figured this part out. When you lower the unit, it puts it into the swivel mode. Yeah. And when you raise the unit, it locks it. it. Locks it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's it. Um, so is there any depth to your three-point? Just all the way down? You don't have to worry about. Uh, you can use the top link. Uh, I, I suppose. Think, yeah. Yeah. You tilt it back and push the hydraulic top link back. It's going to put the weight back here. Maybe lift, you can adjust it without actually adjusting the roller. Lifting that up. Yeah. Well, it looks like they've got it adjusted pretty good from the factory, so I can use the top link to raise and lower the depth. Okay, so this is Bermuda grass. Yep, Tiff Tough Bermuda. Tiff uh, Tough? Tiff, T-I-F-F-T-U-F-F. -F -F. Okay. Tiff Tough Bermuda. It's a sodded variety. Uh, I don't think you can get it in seed or, uh, you might better get it in sprigs, but I know for sure that it comes so in So what sod. would you call this cutting height? Uh, that's at two inches. Okay. T typically I keep it at a half inch. Okay. Half an inch, like that. But I've been really, really busy this year. I just ain't been able to keep up, to be yeah. honest with you. Probably in our last episode, some of you were asking, why does Pete have turf tires? Well, we should know now. All right, let me say this from a uh, growing turf perspective. This is fabulous. Okay. 
What Fabulous. Is, why? I have aerated, opened the ground up, let air and water penetrate. I have cut the rhizome and the stolen of the Bermuda to make it okay. spread. And how much damage did I do? I think by tomorrow you won't notice. Nothing. Now my is question amazing. is: Is there is there something scientific about the uh, the angle of which we drive? Uh, no, I, it's curvy because I was watching you. But I didn't want you to get run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to watch you in there, but I was like, "Get out of the road, Tim!" <laughs> but look at that, man! That is absolutely. You got your pocket knife? I got a screwdriver. Yeah, that'll work. Let's see what we're looking like here. I'm gonna take your bit off. I don't want to lose your bit. Yeah, we're deeper than that. Yeah, that's that's extremely nice. How it cuts that slit down in there, that groove. So you're aer aerating and and uh, pretty much verticutting in a way. But uh, yet, but yet not with not the mess. Without the mess, it's, it, obviously it's not it's not traditional verticutting. But you're cutting the stolen rhizome. You're not thinning it out. Now, how often do you plan to do something like this on your baseball fields? A couple of times a year. A couple of times a year. On a high-end field, a high-end high school field. College, where they really want it to look way better, they can do it once a month. Okay. I mean, gosh, if you feel froggy, you can do it once a week. Okay. Know? Is this what a golf green is? Is it? Is it use this? It, a lot of golf greens are Bermuda grass greens, especially when you get down south. Uh, but it's, it's a different variety of Bermuda that's able to be maintained at a, a super low cut of height, okay. height of cut. But th this is what you would find in a home yard, tip, tip tough. This is, would be a beautiful yard. We just can't oh. do this up in Indiana, right? No, I mean, you can, but man, your winters get kind of hard and the Bermuda doesn't like hardcore winter because it, it, when it comes out of dormancy in the spring, you're left with some big dead areas and stuff like that. And then you have to grow it back in to enjoy it for a couple months. So yeah, it's not really worth yeah. it. Transition zone south is really ideal for Bermuda grass. It really is beautiful. Now, how often do you water this? Uh, once a week. And I got full blown irrigation. I run this system for 30 minutes once a week. That's it. And I, I'll really, I'll really surprise you. I haven't been putting any fertilizer on it. I've been so busy. Yeah. I haven't put any fertilizer on this in probably two and a half months. And typically Bermuda's a, a heavy feeder. It, it likes more fertilizer more frequent yeah. times during the summer. But you can see it looks absolutely wonderful with no fertilizer too. I can tell it's very sensitive to height of cut. The ground needs to be pretty level or pretty smooth in order to mow because if it's uneven, you're gonna get those scalp marks. And when you get the scalp marks, you cut down into the canopy. All the leaf tissue is kind of at the tips of a Bermuda plant. And when you cut that off, you're left with a brown spot. See my spot up in the corner right there? Yep. Uh, I, I, I asked the guys to mow while I was gone. I think they had the deck down too low. and They, they figured it out they, in about they, 15 feet. They figured it out really quickly. Uh, cool thing with Bermuda, in a couple of weeks, that'll be healed right back up. Okay, so it's, it's not a permanent damage. Lord, no. Not with Bermuda. So if you wanted to get this back down to half an inch, would you just cut it off or would you try to lower it an eighth at a time? You could do it one of two ways. You could take it down gradually or you could come in here and skin it to the ground, collect all your mess, dispose of it, and just be patient and it'll grow right back. Bermuda's tough as a nail, man. It's tough. Well, let's see you try it again only. Don't get any closer to the road. I might get run over. <laughs> I got to watch the center here, my irrigation heads. I can slide over one more and be safe. Now what you need to see is that those aren't those aren't spinning, they're just shaking. See, I can touch them. It's not like it's spinning real fast. They're just shaking. It's on a camshaft like thing. Now, I want to make sure th this 
Aerovator or whatever this thing is. It's the Seed Evader with the slicers or whatever. It's not sponsored, right? Uh, Pete bought this thing and it's an opportunity for me to show something that I wouldn't use, mm -hmm. but I love to show every attachment that can be put on a compact tractor and and this was very fascinating i really appreciate your time isn't this stuff so cool it, it really it's is so cool, man. amazing what all the stuff you can do if you're interested in that pressure washer kit we'll put a link below five percent off code ttwt just the pressure washer kit not everything else on the site sorry about that uh, but if you do buy something else on the site leave uh leave pete a note and tell him that uh, ttwt sent you you want to go get some banana pudding I think I've had enough banana pudding for today. Cheeseburger? I hate to say that I'm not even hungry for it. Of course I can eat a cheeseburger. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> no, I've, I've had a blast, man. This, it, it's, it's always fun when you come down here. Yeah, it's, so. it's, been, uh, it's been a good time. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you got a tractor and I'm glad you're enjoying it. And I'm glad you helped me out in making the decision because yeah. I could not be more happy with that tractor. Look what you did. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's great to hear because the last thing we'd want to do is direct you to something that you say, I wish I'd have bought the other one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I think you feel the same way for your viewers, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. GCI Turf is the name of your channel. Yes, sir. Go check it out and subscribe to that. You'll learn a lot more about Bermuda and ball fields and... And fescue and bluegrass and I wanted and something rye. else that started with B and then I was going to Bermuda and ball fields and... Uh, baby dolls, okay. And baby that... dolls. We don't do baby dolls here. <laughs> <laughs> now my daughter does. Okay, that's okay, it. okay, okay. Matter of fact, I don't think my daughter even played with baby dolls, man. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Can papyrus grow tall where there is no marsh? Can reeds thrive without water? While still growing and uncut, they wither more quickly than grass. Such is the destiny of all who forget God. So perishes the hope of the godless. So that's, that's so it don't jiggle around on you when you're when you're using it. So how do you want to do this? a little jiggly round? Yeah. yeah. We've been jiggling all day, man. I see a little jiggle right there from that banana pudding. Yeah, I got a little extra jiggle. Yeah. Some people were asking this morning to your uh, Instagram post if I was losing weight. Well, I've made it up at lunch. Yeah, yeah. Well, you hang around me, you're not going to lose much weight. I can tell you that now.